Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Physiology Learning. In today's discussion, we are going to understand a very important applied aspect of respiratory system which is high altitude physiology. This is going to be a two part series wherein in the first part we will just understand the what are all the physiological changes that happens in high altitude. In the second part, we are going to discuss about the mountain sickness. So let's get into the topic. So the learning objectives are first we will try to understand what happens to the barometric pressures in high altitude and what is the physiological changes in high altitude. These physiological changes in high altitude are called as yes all of us know it is acclimatization right. So the next topic will be high altitude sickness which will be dealt in the second part of this video. Now coming to the barometric pressures in high altitude what happens to the barometric pressure as and when the person ascends up or moves to a higher altitude. As and when we move on to the higher altitude, the density of the air itself is going to reduce. So what will happen to the barometric pressure? They are automatically going to come down. So the atmospheric pressure also decreases with high altitude. This is the reason why when as when the person ascends in mountains, he is usually presented with hypoxia. So the pressure at sea levels is around 760 mmHg. This pressure will half at the height of 550 meters and all of us know Himalayas is at the height of 8800 meters. So it is going to come down below half. If the barometric pressure drops, what will happen to the percentage of gases? The percentage of gases is going to remain the same. For example, even if the pressure is 760 mm of Hg or if it drops to 300 mm of Hg, then also oxygen contribution is going to be 21 percentage of O2 but see the overall value the overall value of oxygen pressure partial pressure is going to come down and one more thing the water vapor pressure stays the same even if the altitude changes the barometric pressure for example here the water vapor pressure is 47 mm of Hg which we discussed in transport of gases and transport of oxygen the same amount of water vapor pressure will be same whatever the altitude is. So see here out of this 347 will be taken by the water vapor pressure. So the overall oxygen partial pressure it is going to drop down a lot in case of high altitude. In high altitude the person is going to suffer under hypoxic hypoxia. In our hypoxia chapter we saw that if the level of oxygen itself availability of oxygen itself is reduced it is called as hypoxic hypoxia. So let us see what are the physiological changes. The physiological changes are acute and chronic. Acute starts immediately and chronic starts from 2 to 3 days. So the acute changes will be starting immediately and then there will be chronic changes. This process of physiological changes is called as acclimatization. The person is getting acclimatized to the high altitude. As and when this happens, the person states their generation stays for many, many years and many, many generations. So what will happen? There will be a process called as adaptation. This adaptation can be passed on to their siblings also. So let's try to understand what is acclimatization and what is adaptation. Acclimatization is a temporary change. For example, a person goes to high altitude, he stays there for a few months and comes back. This change is going to be temporary. He might have got some physiological changes there, but when he returns to the lowland, it is going to revert back. Whereas in case of adaptation, these are permanent changes and this happens over short time. This happens over generations. That's why the mountain people who are there for a generations to generations, they have an inbuilt advantage in their genetic makeup itself. So the genetic makeup is not affected in case of acclimatization, whereas it can be inherited genetically in case of adaptation. Now coming to the changes in acclimatization, what will happen in acclimatization? There are various things that is going to happen in acclimatization like increase in pulmonary ventilation, increase in diffusing capacity of the lung, increase in number of red blood cells itself then increase in the vascularity of the tissues plus finally all the tissues will have the increased ability to use oxygen despite the low PO2. So let's see through them one by one. First change that happens when a person acclimatizes 
or moves on to high altitude all of us would have experienced we will be definitely breathing faster that is called as hyperventilation so the first change starts in the respiratory process itself which is hyperventilation what happens here here both the tidal volume which is the volume per breath as well as the respiratory rate it is going to increase so the overall ventilation is going to increase so how does this happen this happens because the hypoxic hypoxia wherein the dissolved o2 is decreased in hypoxia hypoxia the dissolved o2 is decreased as and when the dissolved o2 is decreased they are going to stimulate the peripheral chemoreceptors and increase the ventilation process so both the tidal volume as well as the respiratory rate will be increased thereby helping the pulmonary ventilation this hyperventilation does one more thing if we are hyperventilating what will happen to the co2 washout there is an increase in co2 washout also because of this co2 washout what will happen they there will be a process called as respiratory alkalosis will happen this alkalosis it's not so good why because in respiratory alkalosis because of co2 washout my stimulation of the respiratory center is going to come down which we don't want but there is a mechanism to overcome this who does help for respiratory alkalosis obviously it is the kidneys what they are going to do is they are going to conserve the h plus ions h plus ions are conserved at the same time they will help in eliminating the excess bicarbonate that is the alkalinity is expelled out and acidity is maintained so bicarbonate is moved out this increase in co2 washout will be there and they will break the respiration but again with the help of renal system the respiration is going to start back because it increases the h plus ions in the blood which is going to help for the stimulation of respiration now coming to the second change which is increasing in diffusing capacity of the lung there is an increasing in diffusing capacity of the lung in two ways first thing is there is an increase in air lung volume with the help of hyperventilation next thing that is going to happen is there is also an increase in diameter of the pulmonary capillaries and more and more capillaries will be recruited also so because of these two process the diffusing capacity of the lung is going to improvise a lot now coming to the increase in red blood cells so what all we have increased first we have increased the ventilation second we have increased the diffusing capacity now we are trying to increase the red blood cells count itself if more and more red blood cells are available they are going to carry in more and more oxygen so but how this happens let's see there is hypoxia which is causing to produce a factor called as hif which is our hypoxia inducible factor this hypoxia inducible factor is produced from the kidney and what they do is they go and stimulate the epo which is our erythropoietin yes right it is our erythropoietin this erythropoietin is a beautiful thing which can stimulate the colony forming unit erythroblast that is our precursor form of rbcs so as and when this erythroblast gets stimulated they will produce more and more rbc cells that is why in high altitude we see polycythemia also now coming to the another change which is increased vascularity of the peripheral tissue the peripheral tissues their vascularity that is the blood vessels supplying them they are saying there is formation of many new vessels many new vessels are forming in so this process is called as angiogenesis if more and more new vessels are forming in obviously the tissue can sustain the hypoxia because now it is receiving more blood supply and it can withdraw the amount of oxygen from different vessels or many vessels so how does this happen this hypoxia well again we have seen that it produces a factor called as hif this hypoxia inducible factor is also called as master switch already we have seen one of its function that is it is switching the function to produce more and more rbcs now what it is doing is this master switch is going to produce a substance called as vegf which is vascular endothelial growth factor it is going to produce more and more of this vegf which will lead on to angiogenesis and thus helping the person to get more oxygen 
Now coming to the final change which happens even at the cellular level. The hypoxic changes started from the alveolar level through hyperventilation. Then there was an increase in diffusion capacity and more and more RBCs were there. Now more and more vascularity of the tissue was there. And finally there is changes at the cellular level also. All the cells in the body, the cell mitochondria as well as the cytochrome oxidase which is the enzymes which is involved in utilization of oxygen all of them are increased with all these changes the person is able to acclimatize to the higher altitude if these changes have not been there none of us would get a chance to visit high, high places like Leh Ladakh and all now coming to the take home points acclimatization changes there is an increase in pulmonary ventilation increase in diffusion capacity of the lung increase in RBCs increase in vascularity of the peripheral tissue and finally the ability of the tissue or the cellular changes happens wherein their ability to utilize more and more oxygen is established i hope it was clear thank you for watching the video in the next discussion we'll be seeing about the mountain sickness which is acute and chronic mountain sickness thank you